Warning, the following program contains scenes of death. こんにちは。え、発生から he lost his job at the care home in February, reportedly after violence towards patients and staff. In the same month, when Satoshi Yomatsu broke a window and climbed through it at the Sagamahara care home for the crippled and the retarded, he was carrying a bag of 16 knives of various sizes, a roll of duct tape, and two sardine sandwiches, both with mayo, no butter. And up to that point, no one was sure if he'd had a good day or a bad day. But five minutes after entering that window, the world would know. The first thing he did when he entered was cut the alarm system. Easy peasy, Japanesey. And in his very own words to the police, he went from room to room making mental case mincemeat. No hamburger helper needed. Just 100% retard. Slicing and dicing the innocent and afflicted. <laughs> For most of the patients, either incapacitated or strapped to their beds, it was like a human abattoir. With the attack lasting just over an hour. I guess he wanted to make sure that he was thorough. When police and ambulance crews arrived and entered the building, it looked like the patients had been giving each other haircuts with chainsaws. Complete carnage. Well, many of them still laying in their bed from a sleep that they never awake. With 19 dead, and 45 severely injured, with staff members and security tied up, left unhurt. And after an evening of playing sushi chef, Iomatsu gave himself up to the police. And when he handed in his bag, he confessed. He said, I did it. I want all vegetables to die. And police figured with the blood and the guts that he had all over him. They instinctively knew that he wasn't talking about the garden variety of vegetables. Inside the bag was 16 knives covered with blood and guts and a whole lot of other things that you wouldn't want to make a salad out of. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. They found a half-eaten sardine sandwich. I know what you're thinking, but I don't think he was worried about his breath. Because if he was, he would have been carrying breath mints. As the story of the massacre started to leak out to the world's press, they were horrified, but they were also shocked that the crime 
hadn't even made it to any of Japan's newspapers. The country's biggest modern day massacre didn't even lead on the six o'clock news. Many put this down to Japan's embarrassment of the disabled. It had been long known there was a stigma attached to what the government and its people considered an imperfection out of sight, out of mind. With families finding it's easier to stick a loved one in an institution and hide them away to deal with the public shame. Police figure that most of the goofy bastards were probably already asleep when Yuimatsu entered the building and started serving them up al fresco. But those who heard screams almost half a mile away will probably disagree. This is not a case of reactionary crime where the suspect blew up and took a knife or gun. He went into the dark of the night, opened one door at a time and stabbed the sleeping people one at a time. I just can't believe the cruelty of this crime. But is this the truth? Or what the cops want to pass off is truth? Because what police also found in Yui Matsu's possession when he turned himself in and was never mentioned in any of the papers was two ticket stubs to retard a super handicapped pro wrestling. A highly controversial Jap-only sport where retards and cripples are put into a ring to battle it out gladiator style. Blind fighting crippled, crippled fighting retard. Two go in, one comes out, and the winner is hailed as a spastic Spartacus. And the loser is forced to clean up his own puddle of piss and shit. And then he's thrown back on the same tiny bus he rode in on. And although gambling in Japan is highly illegal, the Jap mob, the Jakuza, are heavily involved in the sport, turning over billions of dollars a year in gambling, meaning the government couldn't stop their country's shame, even if they wanted to. The night of the murders, Iomatsu brought a lady friend to the match. Now tell me, why would a guy with a pretty girl go out for a meal and then go watch a bunch of goofballs on a mat slap each other silly? Then go home, fuck his girlfriend, shower, then go back to the place he used to work and start making handicap cold cuts. At least to me, it don't make sense. Something don't smell right. And it isn't those handicap diapers. A suspicious man may say that Iumatsu went to that match and laid down a lot of cash on one of those special athletes to win. When they didn't, he decided to extract a little revenge on their handicapped asses. And it wouldn't be too hard. Flick a brake on a wheelchair, and you got all the time in the world. Shooting the proverbial racehorse. Handicap athletes making handicapped faces. You know the score. Special my ass. What makes this story even more sentimental was that the wrestlers that he went and saw that night, well, they were patients at the home that he worked in. Apparently, they were all amigos. Isn't that sweet? Me, I don't believe in coincidences. And after his arrest, the cops started poking around inside his apartment. They found almost a million American dollars stuffed inside his mattress. And pictures of handicapped wrestlers, no doubt making handicapped faces. Along with the betting odds of each one of those so-called wrestlers. Now how do you make that much money cleaning shitty diapers for a living? They also found a man obsessed with Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator movies, which is when the police gave him his unofficial nickname, the retard Terminator. And yeah, sure, it's offensive. But you gotta admit, it's goddamn catchy as well. Evil cause, evil effect. It was almost two months since Iomatsu had made available a lot of handicapped parking spaces. Then, almost as if it had been coordinated, police released a letter that he'd apparently written to the government a couple months earlier. He told them that he had a plan to euthanize all retards and cripples. 
with their guardian's permissions, of course, because he felt that they were a burden on society. Now tell me, is this what the truth looks like? Or is it really a confession written after the fact by a Yakuza-affiliated gambler? Who knows if he's ever put out in the street again? He'll be joining his amigos to a stairway to heaven. Although I'm guessing there won't be stairs, probably an elevator. A paraplegic paradise. Because rumor has it that the Yakuza don't take too kindly to be ripped off. And after all, if you can't trust the fix, then what can you trust? When investigators started poking around, they found out that Iumatsu followed the typical profile of the quiet loner, who no one knew what he was capable of. He always greeted me with a smile. He was never loud or caused problems for the neighbors. So the truth of the matter is that I'm very surprised. Absido. When word started leaking out that Iumatsu had worked at the care home, but also had ties with retard wrestling and the Yakuza. Well, the government started doing a little PR. And their version of the story was that he'd been fired from the home months earlier for mistreating the patients. But this is in direct contrast to what Iomatsu said, that he'd quit on his own volition to write a book. The book that includes Iomatsu's poems and philosophies and his own drawings, if this is anything to go by, and if it's ever released, looks like it's gonna be a top seller. Harry Potter, watch out. I guess I'll have to wait until they release it on audiobook. When the trial eventually commenced, in typical Japanese fashion, it were a fucking freak show, with many lining up in the rain for hours to get a glimpse of what the press had now dubbed the retard Terminator, and some even hailed as a hero. And when he finally got to open his sushi hole, told the judge and the court that they could do with him what they pleased. But he wasn't admitting to anything wrong. He loved Japan, and they were just trying to eradicate it of a problem. Defense lawyers tried to save his life by saying his actions were the result of years of abuse of marijuana. But that didn't cut it with the judge. I guess he was a smoker too. Because although the crimes were heinous, they were planned. And he believed that although a bit of a fucking nut, there was no way he was not responsible for those crimes. And oddly enough, during the whole trial, there was no mention of retard wrestling, or gambling, or even the mob. There was one big freak show with the Omatsu biting off his own finger and throwing it at the judge, which didn't go over too well. And in typical Japanese fashion, they got rid of the embarrassment and sentenced Iomatsu to death. And they tore down the home and moved the residence out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> Japan's stigma around the disabled, or broken as they are known as, means that very little information on the murders has been released. And in the end, we may never know the motivation for the massacre in the care home that night. Even the victims' names still haven't been released and remain a mystery. And what's the Japanese government gonna say? That Japan's biggest massacre in modern day history is directly related to the mob and illegal gambling on a sport that many feel is draconian and cruel. And the Yakuza, what do they gotta say? They probably got half the courts and the cops in their back pocket. So Yui Matsu, he's where he needs to be if he wants to wake up each and every day. In a recent government census, it was shown that 4% of Japan's population were either retarded or crippled. So answer me this, why was Japan's biggest massacre in peacetime not even reported in the papers? Not even one hashtag. Absolutely nothing. You know, I can't help but wonder if retarded and disabled people dream. And if they do, I only hope the one they were sleeping and that knife plunged in, they were dreaming of bottomless glasses of sake and big-breasted teenage girls. You know the score. And I guess if they don't dream, 
than there never were. Legion Forever! Yes.